Hello and welcome to episode 10, subtitle, They Never Thought You'd Make This Many. Before I start, can I draw your attention to the news that More Fun Making It has a new website. This was kindly sorted out for me by my amazing friend, Richard Horsley. Check out his book, Static Push, available on Kindle. It's amazing. So now you have a one-stop place to find out everything about what I'm up to. In this episode, I'll share my ups and downs over the last week or so of the build. Not everything has gone according to plan, and as you will see coming up, I wasted a fair amount of time building something which I then scrapped. My original plan was to trim the edges of the cabinet with plastic gold T-moulding, and as you can see, I've even cut the slots to fit this later. Well, that plan has changed. As the build has progressed, the theme of the cabinet has evolved. I've moved from a more modern looking aesthetic to something with a taste of vintage. To keep the oak lockdown bar company, I decided to trim the cabinet in, you guessed it, oak. Before I glue anything to the edge of this MDF, I need to fill that slot with a spline of wood and remove as much of the paint as possible. This section of the trim will be more susceptible to knocks, so I need to make sure it's fixed well. That little area where the paint is stubbornly not being planed off is where I must have tipped the flush trim router along that edge. I didn't spot that at the time. The oak trim will overhang slightly on the outside of the cab and a bit more on the inside. This will give the impression that the sides of the cabinet are thicker than they really are. I'm using one inch thick oak. The overhang on the inside will form the top of a slot for the glass top, which is the main reason for this change from T-moulding. Before I go much further, I need to get some more paint on the sides, and all the other bits too. And for that I need a serious sanding block. I couldn't resist showing off my straight cut here. Don't worry, it doesn't happen very often, and any other day this would have been a triangle. Here we have my favourite sandpaper, 240 grit oaky. I could break out the random orbitals sander for this instead, and that would do the job quickly, but it would also be fairly aggressive. I don't want to burn through what little paint I already have on there. Another coat of acrylic primer all over, first coat on the new feet parts and the other bits that were sanded back to bare wood. Once that's dry, I go over the whole thing with wood filler. On the base here, I'm just filling in the worst parts without worrying too much about making it perfect. Most of these corner parts will be hidden by the legs. I only really need to make the bits that show smooth. I thought it might be a good idea to make the last wooden part that's still missing before I did any more painting. 
Then I could paint it all at the same time and not waste too much time. I dug this piece of 9mm ply out of my scrap bin and set about turning it into a back door. The rule on a table saw is to not cut anything with a rip fence that is wider than it is long. That's a dangerous cut. The wood can get jammed between the blade and the fence causing a kickback. Most of the time this is actually perfectly fine but this time I recognise it didn't feel quite right and I killed the power before it could kick. I didn't spot it at the time but the reason was actually more to do with the board being warped. More on that later. That can also cause a kickback. The safer way to cut this is with a mitre gauge. <laughs> like so. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. Lesson learned. On my way back from cutting in the shed, I noticed Gus had wandered into the garden to socialise. I moved in for a stroke and, oh, a bit rude really. The door fits a treat. I still hadn't spotted the slight warp. The flush hinges I'd intended to use on this door are for thicker wood than this and won't work. So I'm using a piano hinge. I've seen many other builds use these for the doors on arcade machines and the like. But I'd never used one myself. It fits perfect on this thickness of board. The fixing holes are perfectly centred. Cutting it to size is a simple hacksaw job. and fitting it to the edge of the door is simple using the hinge as a guide. Screwing into the edge of plywood really needs a pilot hole. I have a new jack plane. It's not particularly an expensive one, but I have set it up so it cuts really nicely. Makes planing a straight edge a breeze now. The door is cut to the size of the hole with the hinge on the edge. The door will need to be trimmed down to allow room for it. I grab my jack plane once more. Not quite. It's a little out of square, the line will have to be planed down to match the door hole. Some card on the bottom edge to maintain a gap. It could probably do with being trimmed down some more. We can skip ahead a bit here. because the door is warped. This was all a big waste of time and serves me right. I really should have checked as I've had problems with this type of plywood before. I could probably straighten it with battens on the backside but the whole reason of using a thinner bit of plywood was to save some weight. You can see here it's not a lot but it's enough. Annoyed with myself I put the door to one side, the bin, Intending to build another one from MDF and hang it with flush hinges instead and moved on to another job. The back box also needs painting so that will need to be emptied.
These MDF edges have a couple of coats of primer and are ready to be properly smoothed. I've also switched to a coarser but slightly worn grit of sandpaper here in the hope it will cut a little quicker. It's not. Switching back to the 240 grit I give the inside sections a quick rub down. I'd noticed some rough spots around the bezel and I wanted to address those. And another quick skim of filler. There are some brad nail holes in the top here. I masked off this edge before painting the side. It was a bit of a waste of time as just as much paint worked its way up and under the tape as got on the other side which I didn't mask. I think another couple of coats of primer undercoat and then I'll give it a good sanding so that the surface is very flat. Then coat it with two coats of eggshell. I'm hoping that will be flat enough to paint the art on without needing too much more sanding. Not entirely happy with this ridge. The part that will show isn't too bad, as you can see here. Another few coats of paint and it will be invisible. The dust is getting pretty bad in my workshop. It'll, it's getting into everything. My hands are cracking from being so dry, hence the fetching gloves. Now the surfaces are less absorbent, each coat is easier to apply. Before I go any further with the painting, I need to think about attaching this trim. It's a tricky decision, I could wait until the painting is all finished but that would risk damaging it with glue or clamps. Or I could fix it now and have to paint up to the edge of the bare oak. Both have their downsides and I think I'll go with the latter. More splines in the slots of the back box. Not all of them this time though. These aren't going to be knocked or leaned on as much as the side trim.
Cutting next to the line is key here. And then I use my shooting board to trim it down to the exact length. Might want to tighten that tripod screw a bit there, bud. These turned out to be exactly the same length, which is nice. I won't need to mark one left and one right. The last thing to do is taper that end down to meet the top of the lockdown bar. A few more splines and then we are done for this episode. This week has been a bit of a struggle with not as much progress as I would have wanted, but it's still moving. The hardest part of all the builds I've done is finishing, dragging it, kicking and screaming over the line. That's where we are now and this week has been a bit of a fight. There are big jobs yet to be done but there are niggling little jobs getting in the way of starting them. With luck I can break out the little brushes sometime over the next week and we can finally see the end of the build in the not too distant future. I would really like to have this complete before Christmas if possible and I think it should be done by then. My previous estimates of a couple of weeks were a little optimistic let's say. But I should know by now that the hardest part is finishing. I'll keep plugging away till it's done, to my satisfaction. There's little sense in madly rushing it to completion. That'll just mean more hilarious mistakes and me taking even longer. Next week my goals are to finish putting the trim on and finish the white coats of paint and the black coat on the back box. Always put sharp chisels away. They are dangerous. This safety message is brought to you by like and subscribe.